Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, July 21st, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. For about the last two years, ever since we sort of originally saw uh, these sextortion schemes uh, come out, Rick has been tracking the money that was made using uh, these scams. Now, in case you don't remember, these are these emails that claim that someone has compromising material about you, that they used your webcam to record you, and then they ask for some number of bitcoins in order to erase that material and not leak it. Now, these scams has of different levels of sophistication, and Rick has been tracking the Bitcoin addresses that we collected that received uh, Bitcoins uh, as part of uh, these scams. Now, we haven't really seen a lot of these lately. Some of them also switched to Monero, which is more difficult to track. So Rick is now wrapping this up uh, with a final post. Overall, he did track 568 Bitcoins or about $800,000. And the final $102,000 in Bitcoins uh, were taken out of uh, these accounts earlier in June. And the security arm of Chinese company Tencent demonstrated an interesting new variation of the evil charger attack. Now, I always feel that some of the warnings of plugging your device into a public charger are somewhat overblown. But, well, uh, this new variation of the attack, I think, has some real potential, but it only affects USB-C. Now, USB-C is different than USB-A in the sense that it does everything. It does uh, high power charging and high speed networking and also has the ability to dynamically adjust uh, the charging voltage and current based on negotiating the parameters with a device. Now, in the usual evil charger attack, the charger is attacking the device that connects to it in order to charge. This attack sort of takes a different approach. The device connecting to the charger will actually attack the charger and update the firmware in the charger, which often is not well protected. So the result is that you can load malicious firmware into the charger. You can alter the charging protocols and when the next device is connected to the charger, the charger will deliver a too large voltage, too much power, and this can result as Tencent demonstrated actually uh, the device itself and cause it to go up in flames. Now, I have not seen a lot of public USB-C chargers. Most of the public chargers are still USB-A, but they certainly start showing up. So in this case, an attacker could, for example, walk through a public area that offers these chargers, infect them with malicious firmware, and then just wait for others to plug in their devices to have them destroyed, which, yes, it's just a denial of service attack but could also cause physical harm if the device actually does burst in flames. And Checkpoint found an interesting vulnerability in Zoom that uh, does aid phishing. And the problem here is that Zoom meeting IDs are globally unique. So if I'm, for example, inviting you to a meeting at Zoom, I may be using the SANS Zoom URL, sans.zoom.us, and then the meeting ID. Well, it turns out you were able to swap the first part, the host name for any arbitrary host name and you would still get to the same URL. So you set up yourself a Zoom meeting and then you just use sans.zoom.us with your meeting ID. You send this out and people may believe that you're actually inviting them to a SANS Zoom meeting that's authorized or representing SANS if in fact you had sort of no association with SANS. 
Zoom fixed this and that's of course something they were able to fix on the back end uh, to link meeting IDs to specific customers. And with that, it's no longer possible to move a meeting ID from one customer's vanity URL to another customer's vanity URL. Now, if you are using Office 365 with very old versions of Windows, be aware that mid-October on October 15th, Microsoft will turn off support for TLS 1.0 and 1.1. Again, it should really only affect you if you're using something like Windows XP at this point. Not sure about all the other operating systems, but not a big deal in my opinion. They delayed this uh, depreciation of these old protocols actually because of COVID-19 in order to lessen some of the stress on IT departments that of course may end up having to support users who then have problems connecting. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening. And as usual, if you like this podcast, tell your friends about it, post on social media, and please uh, leave some good reviews with any of the podcast sites where you are downloading this podcast from. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow.